2007, during a paper research expedition to China, serendipitously we came across a paper making workshop that was producing extraordinarily large sheets of paper. The region we were exploring was Jingxian in Anhui province. We had visited this area in 1982 during our first paper research expedition in China. At that time, we had the misfortune of being arrested by the People's Police of China and charged with the criminal acts of trespassing and photographing state production. Indeed, we did visit a people's commune and photographed there the traditional hand making of paper that we learned was used as toilet paper. We had learned during our first visit to China that very large sheets of paper were being made in Anhui, which historically has been famous all over China for the very high quality of its paper. However, it took us almost 25 years and 18 expeditions to China before we actually witnessed the making of exceptionally large sheets of paper. The size of the paper that we will describe is three by seven meters. That's 10 feet by 23 feet. As we drove through a mountainous part of Jingxian in 2007, we noticed along the side of the road a number of large posts of paper. We stopped our Jeep and realized that we had arrived at a workshop making very large sheets of paper. The posts of paper we saw were pressed paper waiting to be dried on huge steel heated drying plates. We decided at that moment that the opportunity had arrived for us to document an unusual kind of paper making. Not far from the paper making workshop, we observed high hills covered with strands of white fiber in the form of squares about 18 by 18 inches. The fiber extensively covered the sides of several hills. We noted workmen turning the fiber over so that the bottom surface became the top surface. The material consisted of Qingtan fiber and rice straw fiber. The fibers had been on the hillsides for several months, exposed to the snow, rain, and sun, and was regularly turned over by the workmen. In response to its exposure to the elements, the fiber was naturally bleached. Later, the Qingtan fiber and the rice straw fiber will be combined to produce a paper known as Schwenza. Schwenza was regarded for centuries, including present times, as the finest paper made in China. It was highly sought as the supreme surface for calligraphy and ink brush painting. In the making of the very large sheets of paper, these two fibers were separately cooked in lime. We learned that the paper workshop initially did its own cooking, but now cooking is done by another independent company that only does cooking in an environmentally safe area and then supplies the cooked fiber to many workshops. This photo shows the cookers that were originally used here in Jingxian for cooking the fibers in lime by the workshop we are now visiting. The next step after the fiber is washed free of lime is beating. The beating here is accomplished by large-sized Hollander beaters, as we can see. After beating, 
the pulps are transported to an exceptionally large vat where the fibers, Ching Tan, botanically known as Celtus Teroceltus, and rice straw, technically a rise of sativa, are thoroughly mixed. Now we observe a bucket of formation aid. The formation aid is added to the vat in order to slow down the drainage of water during the sheet formation. The addition of the formation aid thereby facilitates the making of a uniform sheet of paper. We were unable, though, to identify the nature of the formation aid. This video clip shows the enormous size of the vat used to make these very large sheets of paper. The vat dimensions are about 5 by 11 meters, that's 16 by 36 feet. The sheet formation is done by a crew of 14 men who surround the vat. The workers place a flexible bamboo screen on the surface of a wood frame with ribs. They attach deckle sticks to the short ends of the screen. The crew dips one of the long sides of the mold into the vat, raising a quantity of pulp, and they shake the mold to distribute the pulp evenly across the surface of the screen. The crew engages in a second dip using the opposite long side of the mold. The mold is now allowed to rest on one of the long edges of the vat while the water drains out from the screen. Once the deckle sticks are removed, workers raise the screen and carry the screen over to the couching area. When the workers approach the post, they attach the long side of the frame to three pulleys and this side is pulled up to the level of the rail above. This maneuver now allows the wet sheet of paper to face the post. Workmen in the meantime place the lower edge of the screen over the edge of the post while the upper edge of the screen is gradually lowered over the opposite edge of the post. The pulley ropes are now disconnected. The next step is to remove the screen from the surface of the post and to carry the screen back to the vat to begin the sequence of forming another sheet of paper. Now we are observing the formation of a second sheet of paper. We see the screen placed on top of the frame, the decal sticks attached to each short end of the screen. The first dip of the mold is done, followed by slow shaking. Now we see the second dip using the other long side of the mold. After the second dip, the mold rests on the edge of the vat, allowing water to drain out. Workers remove the deckle sticks. The team then removes the screen from the frame, and the cradled screen is carried back to the couching area. Workers attach one of the long ends of the screen to three pulley ropes, which hoist the screen upward to the ceiling. Workers now lower the screen, containing the wet sheet of paper. Note that the wet sheet of paper is now on the undersurface of the screen. The wet sheet of paper is transferred to the post, and the screen, which has already been detached from the pulley ropes, is pulled away and returned to the sheet formation vat for the formation of the next sheet of paper. We are now observing the formation of a third sheet of paper, and we are close to the vat action. The crew of 14 men have already dipped the mold. The workers remove the screen containing the newly formed sheet of paper and carry it to the couching area. 
Now we see the couching of the paper upon the post. The workers are very careful in lowering the sheet. They make sure that the sheet of paper has been transferred carefully upon the preceding sheet. The men use quick movements to loosen the screen from the post at both long ends. Then a team of two men bring one long end over to the second long end and the screen is totally lifted away from the post. They return the screen to the vat to prepare to make another sheet. Our final review of sheet formation and couching is in slow motion. We observe the workers placing the screen upon the frame. The frame and screen constitute the mold. The men now attach the deckle sticks at each short end of the mold. The deckle sticks have the function of keeping the screen securely in place. In this scene, the crew of 14 workers are holding the mold over the large vat in preparation for the dipping command from their leader. The leader has given a dipping command and the workers are now dipping the long side of the mold, seen on the left here, deeply into the pulp, which is a mixture of the ching tan and rice straw fiber. we see a wave of pulp moving across the surface of the mold. The workers lift the mold out of the vat and place it so that half of the mold is dripping on the floor and the other half is dripping back into the vat they are removing the deckle sticks. Now they raise the screen from the frame and fold the screen to form a cradle. Inside the cradle, the newly formed sheet of paper is resting. The workers are carrying the screen toward the couching area. They are attaching one of the long ends of the screen to three pulleys, which are raising the heavy screen toward the ceiling in a vertical manner. The screen is now at a 90 degree angle to the couching area. We are facing the side of the screen which has the wet paper and this side of the screen is gradually being lowered toward us. The workers are intent on getting the screen to fall directly upon the couching area. The screen is being lowered and lowered and lowered. The workers are carefully guiding the end of the couching step. One worker is ready to unhook one of the pulley ropes. The workers are now removing the screen from the top of the post and will return the screen to the vat area to begin once more the cycle of forming a new sheet of paper. Pressing is the next step and follows sheet formation. In the photo we are looking at now, we observe the post of paper that will be pressed at the end of the workday. We did not remain at the workshop during the pressing step 
but the workshop spokesman showed us the equipment used in pressing and described the process. He told us they cover the post with a cloth, place boards over the cloth, and then place a series of hydraulic jacks over the boards. Next, the workers place steel frames over the jacks. The jacks are now in position between the board-covered post below and the steel frames above. The operation of the jacks produces uniform slow increase of pressure upon the post, causing water to be squeezed out from the large post of paper. The final step in making these enormously large sheets of paper is drying. Here we see a post of paper that has already been pressed but not yet dried leaning against the wall. A worker is standing on a stool and loosening the top corners of the sheets. He slowly peels the outer sheet off the post. He folds it loosely and places it on a platform where it will be retrieved by members of a two-man team who carry the paper into an adjacent room for drying. In this sequence, we see a fire chamber located outside of the drying room. Wood is placed into the fire chamber, which is the space between the vertical steel drying plates. He ignites the wood and as it burns the drying plates become hot. Now in the drying room we see two men who work in unison. They brush the large sheet of damp paper upon the heated vertical plates. One man, standing on a platform, brushes the upper part of the paper sheet upon the plate, while his colleague brushes the lower part of the same sheet upon the hot surface of the plate. Again, please note that the paper size is 10 feet high and 23 feet long. Here we see a worker carrying the folded damp paper from the peeling room into the drying room. In this sequence, we see two workers remove the dried large sheet of paper from the heating plate. The ultimate use of this finest quality paper called Schwenza is calligraphy and ink brush painting. This artwork is generally displayed in vast spaces in public buildings. The worker is brushing a new sheet of damp paper on the vertical heated steel plate for drying. The second worker below is brushing the lower part of the damp paper upon the heated plate. Note how the worker brushing the lower part of the paper is eliminating air pockets in order to produce perfectly smooth paper.
In conclusion, we have described the making of a very large sheet of paper, a goal that we accomplished accidentally in 2007 after nearly 25 years of paper research expeditions in China.